All right, let's do another session. Uh, we're going to keep working on our flips and rolls. I'm just going to remind you that I have got the snappy default set with the throttle at 100, and I think everything else is at defaults for snappy. All right, I'm going to go to the meadow just for a change of scenery. In the last session, we worked on, we started doing flips and rolls at all. And I'd like you to now, first of all, don't just move on to this one. Get good at flips and rolls before you before you start moving on, because you're really going to want to feel confident. Uh, you're going to want to have the experience of mistiming a flip or a roll and having to recover quickly. You know, you're going to really want to feel like you're within your envelope before you start then playing with it. Um, okay, so so assume that you've you spent some time practicing between the last session and this one. Although I'm probably going to put it out literally a day later, uh, maybe even the same day. I don't know. But, you know, everybody's at a different place and they're practicing, so I'm kind of trying to get this series out, and you should take it at your own pace, okay? All right, that being said, let's go ahead and get in the air. So I'm going to take off, and what I want you to do now is I want you to practice doing your flips and rolls at different speeds, and I want you to start getting a sense for how much air time you have before you hit the ground. Now, d don't expect that this will be the same for your real copter in real life, but you can do the same exercise in real life. So maybe the first thing to do is to get up to a given height, cut your throttle, and just wait. And see how long you have in the air and get a feel for it. Again, I will remind you that depending on how your copter is configured in real life, if you cut the throttle all the way, it may tumble, you may lose control. That depends on if you've got motor stop turned on, idle up, air mode, that is all a separate issue that I'm not going to get into, but you need to sort that out. But Again, take it up, cut your throttle, and just feel how much time you have before your joystick flakes out and you hit the ground. Dang it. And then you can start to play with it a little. For example, you can hang upside down for a little while. And you can try to do split rolls where you go exactly 180 degrees and then come out of it. Again, try to catch yourself before you hit the ground. You can do slow rolls. And again, watch the ground as you're doing the slow roll and speed it up if you're getting too close and about to crash. Okay. This is the kind of thing that will definitely benefit from doing it in the simulator rather than real life. Drop your, oh, remember to drop your throttle. You see how I'm watching as, how close I'm getting to the ground as I'm doing the move. Just because you're inverted doesn't mean you can't be aware of your altitude. You definitely should still be. Joystick flicked out again, dang it. And you can do the same thing with flips, of course. Do a slow flip. Now with flips, it's a little harder to judge your altitude because you're looking at the sky for a lot of it, whereas with rolls, you, you can see the ground through the whole move. So with flips, it's going to require more of a sense of feel, especially during the end. The good news is that most of the time when you're looking at the sky, if you throttle up, you will gain altitude. You will also end up going backwards. But I can't tell you how many times I have come out of a flip like this and gone, well, I hope I'm not crashing, and then leveled out later. On the assumption that if I'm flying forward, there's probably nothing behind me, and it's probably safe to throttle up. So if I do a flip and I come out of it like this, you know, I probably will gain altitude. If I'm looking at the sky, I will probably gain altitude if I throttle up. And as long as I don't hold that throttle too long, I won't back into something. So I'm flying forward, and I do a flip, and I kind of, oh, sh oh heck, well, that's a, that's a reasonably safe thing to do, to give it a short burst of throttle, as long as you're looking at the sky. So again, just get some altitude, and play with the flips. Do them at different speeds. Oh, that was pretty close, right? Figure out how much fall time you have, and then do split flips like this, where you 
do half a flip, and you know, it was being pretty close there. You do half a flip, and then finish the flip. Okay, and rolls half a roll, a little too much there, and finish the roll. So one of the one of the things I think you can do to really spice up your flying is vary the speed of your flips and rolls. Um, if 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 you have your rates very very high, right, you can just you can just whip off these rolls, you know, all the time, and it can get to look a little monotonous. So I've seen pilots, and they'll do things like they'll do a fast and then a slow roll. They'll do a like that, you know, all sorts of things um, that that can really spice it up. All right. Make sure you're confident with basic moves before you start trying to do these more advanced ones, though. And when you do this in real life, definitely get lots of altitude and and come out early because you know if you're doing a a slow, oh, so graceful, so wonderful, so beautiful crash, right? So you don't want that. Let me give you one more thing because I've only this is a relatively short video at this point. I'll give you another thing you can you can start to practice, and that is. You can practice incorporating flips and rolls into other moves. So I'm going to just start turning into a circle here and just doing a lap around the track here. And you can see that I'm turning to the right. And at any point, I can just drop the throttle, do a roll, and try and come out and continue that same trajectory. It's actually pretty challenging to come out in a way that sort of keeps the trajectory smooth. Okay. So that's another thing you can practice, is just do laps around the track, raise your throttle, start getting some speed, there we go. And at any point, line up your trajectory and toss in a roll and keep going. You will need to adjust your pitch as well. And as you come out of it, try and keep the line smooth. Okay, and do it the other direction too. You can always do left and right. And always drop the throttle a little as you're doing this to avoid pulling yourself into the ground. Okay. And what you'll see is that as you can really incorporate this into whatever you're doing. So if we get a little closer to the ground, you can see it becomes somewhat easy to, here I go, and I'm going to turn and and roll. If the rolls are fat, the faster the rolls are, if you can do them precisely, the safer they are to do close to the ground because they're so instantaneous. So I can be flying straight here and roll and come out of it. And as long as I come out of it at the right angle, it's reasonably safe. I can be turning left here and roll and continue. And likewise, I can, I can be flying straight and flip and it's again you got to you got to come out at, at the right angle flying straight and flip again I, I haven't got the timing on this copter quite quite right let me see if i can get you a good one flying straight and flip see the problem is i'm coming out when i see the horizon but i actually want to be pitched forward a little but the good news is again if you're looking at the sky and you throttle up you're probably helping yourself if you're looking at the ground and you throttle up, you're probably crashing. That was better. I came out at just the right angle to continue forward. And now I'm turning right, so I will throw in a right roll. Turning right, and right roll. And now let's come back around here. Oh, I'm turning left, left roll. And backflip. So I came out of that a little too early. I was looking at the ground. Just finish the move. Don't freak out. Finish the move. Find the horizon and and continue flying. There we go. A nice pass here. Left turn. Left roll. Straight move. Front and go. You may notice that I throttle up a little bit. And depending on how powerful and light your copter is, you may find that in real life you need to give a little throttle punch. It also depends on how high your rates are and how quickly your copter will finish the move and how close to the ground you are. If you're very close to the ground, you may not have enough room to finish the move without crashing, and you may benefit from giving it a little punch of throttle to jump your altitude. But I find that that's not super necessary unless there's something you're trying to clear like that. 
once you become confident at getting at ending these moves precisely, you can yeah, see I came out too early, but again, it's safe to throttle up if you're looking at the sky, probably. Unless you're upside down like that, but probably that's not gonna happen. Once you get to the point where you get the timing on these moves very confident, you can do them very easily. Uh, and at all sorts of times, you can just kind of throw one in. Because when your throttle is low, your copter is just kind of floating, and you're not going to pull yourself offline by doing a flip like uh, a roll like that. And again, a flip is definitely not going to throw you offline because you're moving straight and your motors are pulling you straight during that whole move. Okay, so play with that. Play with all that stuff I showed you. It's a lot of stuff there to get to, to sort of spark your creativity. And uh, we'll come back next time and try some more stuff.